My name is Syed Khalid Jamal. I originally come from India. I grew up in New Delhi, which is the capital of India. It's a fairly large city, city of 20 million, and it's a fascinating city. It's one of the most crowded cities in India, pro probably in the world. Um, one thing that grabs you immediately when you come to Delhi is the traffic and the noise and honking and street food. And because it's a fairly crowded city, uh, you always have people around you. Within two feet, you have 10 people. You board a bus, it's full. You're trying to flag down a taxi, you're not gonna get it, it's hard to get it. Um, but it's also a historical city. One of the one of the fascinating things about Delhi is that you, you drive down, suddenly you would see on your left some ruins from, you know, 19th, 18th century, these magnificent big red bricks, you know, ruins of a fort. Um, and then as you drive down a little bit more, you might see on your left or right this glass building or you could just end up at India Habitat Center, India Cultural Center, which are the really cultural hubs. You will see that there is not enough space, but as you navigate the city, you might, you know, reach Lodi Garden, which is one of the biggest public parks. And this amazing green uh, space, a lot of people walking around. Uh, in its vicinity are the headquarters of World Bank and United Nations and so on. So the diversity of Delhi is just amazing. So if you're somebody who has never been to Delhi and you go there, you're not going to forget. You'll remember. I moved to Tacoma in 2015, actually. So I moved here for good from India. But I first came to the United States in 2008 to, to do my grad studies. I came on a Ford Fellowship program and I came here to study international affairs for my master's in Ohio. One of the things that attracted me to U.S. Uh, as a student was this meeting with somebody uh, who walked into a bookstore. I used to work in a bookstore as a student in Delhi and this American lady with her two daughters just walked into the store and she had this very candid conversation about books and characters in India and culture. She was an American professor who was in India teaching uh, on, a, on a Fulbright scholarship, on a full, full, as a Fulbright faculty. And she and I had this wonderful conversation, just generally about life, about characters, about books. And I saw her interacting with her two daughters. That, I think that was the first time I had seen an American family very close, how they interact with each other. They were constantly nudging each other about something and the girls were just looking around, you know, at different books. And she was talking to me about the books and my, um, it just so happened that she was also a visiting faculty to the same college that I was studying in. So we had something to talk about. Four years after that, I applied for this fellowship called Ford Fellowship. And that gave the opportunity to all the selected fellows to go anywhere in the world, wherever they want to go, they could have gone anywhere. And I had to take a decision, where do I want to go to study? And I often think back um, on that decision. If I had not met Murray, that American professor, who is now like my mother here in the US, she lives on the East Coast now. If I hadn't met her, and if she hadn't made that kind of impression on me, I would have probably gone to Europe, because it was much closer to home, halfway. Um, and there are some great institutions in Europe, especially in the UK uh, or the Netherlands. There were some really good institutions. But suddenly it became so important for me to just go and see the country of that woman who walked into my bookstore. I wanted to go and see where those two girls grew up. And that really was an important reason why I looked at US higher education. And I eventually came to US. I went to Ohio and did my master's. I just missed home so much that I just wanted to go home. So I told my wife, I said, would you like to go? Can you, you want to go? Uh, we can go. And she said, yeah, I've never been to India. She had lived in other parts of Asia, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, she had never been to India. And she, and she and I loved Bollywood a lot. That was our common love. So when I offered her, I said, would you like to go? 
She said yes. So we moved to India for five years. So I first moved from India to US to study. And then I moved back to India for five years and then again moved back to US. So it was kind of back and forth. So when we decided to move to US, Tacoma was an obvious place, primarily because my wife's mother and father lived here and her brother also. So that was it. I was like, all right, that's it. That's the reason, nothing else mattered. Prior to my coming to the US, I had read a lot about US. Uh, I had seen lots of movies. I was a big fan of uh, mass media, movies, documentaries. I had read about Freedom Riders, they were my heroes. I had read about Howard Zinn, I was a big fan of it. And I think that's one of the reasons why when Murray walked in, I was able to talk to somebody who, who is from the same country as these people I was aware of, who were in many ways my heroes, and they still are Freedom Riders. I still, I think I've learned more from them than I've learned from my college or my books, and the courage that they had or RBG, that one woman who could do so much. You know, it, she always amazed me. That one woman, one life could touch so much. And, and they all happened to be Americans and they all contributed to American society. Uh, they fought for human rights in the US. Although what they fought for was not typically American. It could have happened anywhere and it did happen in many other places. My impression of America was that it has this amazing diversity. Like you could meet somebody who could just talk about Wall Street all day long and trading and making money. You could meet somebody who could just talk about technology and nothing about human rights, nothing about human dignity. But then you could also meet somebody on the street who is just completely dedicated to human dignity and human rights. For some reason, even though I had never come to US, I had this idea that you walk down the streets in, in the US and you could meet these people on the same day walking down the street. Uh, you know, it's so interesting that it is true. I experienced that. You know, I often, I when I first came to Tacoma, I met all kinds of people, you know, and they are so diverse. Uh, in college, I, you know, I saw documentaries and, and read about folks who were just, they wanted to be a millionaire. That was their mission. Oh, that's my mission. I want to make a lot of money. I want to drive certain cars. You know, I want to live in certain houses. And that line would come. This is my mission. This is my goal. And then you would have somebody who would say, I want to fight for uh, African-American minorities. I want to fight for, this is my mission. You know, I want to make sure that law is not misused by uh, the haves and, you know, against the uh, not-haves. So that really echoed very strongly in my heart. It really stayed with me. Uh, I was looking forward to that kind of country where I could just walk around and meet these very different people. And I was lucky to, to meet those kind of people. The one thing that I think people should understand about immigrants in general, but also specifically uh, immigrants in Tacoma, is that that immigrant population is not homogeneous. They might just be like you. If you talk to them and if you listen to them and if you visit their home and if you see what movies they like and what sports they play and what jokes cracks them up, you might see yourself. That they're not so different after all. You also might just see them as people who have nothing in common with you and yet their story will resonate with you. I mean, that's why I think American society is so robust because people from different places have come here and they have made America their home. And the people here have learned from each other. It's just, you know, uh, the exposure to average American, uh, to immigrants, and the exposure of average immigrants of average American is so high. They just interact with each other all the time. There is a little bit of you in every immigrant that you meet and that you might want to talk to them and ask them something and tell them something and you will find something common. It is very unlikely uh, that you will just uh, say, oh, this person is just, there's nothing common. There's something common in their story with your story. 
Their methods might be different, their accent may be different, they may have lived in different countries, but their aspirations, their uh, fights, what inspires them, their heroes, uh, what they want to make of their life, the things they find meaning in, there would be a lot of commonalities. So immigrants are not that different in many ways. They are sort of reflection of whatever society they are in. I think it would have helped me a lot if I knew how welcoming the community is. I think I was very hesitant. You know, I just finished nine years here. The first four or five years, I just thought of myself as, oh, I'm new here, people don't know me, and, you know, it'll take me a while to build that. Tacoma is not that community. It's a very trusting community. Uh, I wish somebody had told me that. Uh, and I can say that for almost everybody I know. People are really, really welcoming. They really are trusting. And if you have ideas, they are always there to listen. I wish somebody had told me that. I wish somebody had said, you know, don't hesitate. Just reach out to people. If you want to meet somebody, just write an email, cold email and say, I want to meet, can we meet for coffee? I have this thing to discuss. And more than likely, you are going to hear a yes. They'll say, yeah, sure, where would you like to meet? And that exactly what happened. But it took me three, four years. I was a little hesitant to, you know, I just was not. I wish somebody had told me that. He said, these guys, they're ready to meet. Don't worry about it. And if things doesn't work out, that's fine. You can meet them again. They're really welcoming. It's a very entrepreneurial thing, you know, for us, for a community. To be open to each other's ideas is really the foundation of all entrepreneurship. To discuss ideas, to test it out, to dirty your hands. And, you know, it has happened across the board. I have... You know, the first three, four years, I was a little slow, my bad. I was not reaching out enough. But after that, once I got the hang of it, I have reached out to city and things happened. I reached out to World Trade Center, which is a very structured community, worked out. Chamber of Commerce, I reached out to individual artists, things worked out. I reached out to filmmakers, things worked out. I wrote to universities, they called me in. So one advice that I would absolutely give is this community is just ready to listen. And so don't hesitate to reach out to whoever you think uh, could have a conversation with you. It is very likely that you're going to sit face to face and have a good conversation. And more than likely, you will probably have several conversations, whether something happens or not, but you will definitely have a good conversation. So that advice would have been very helpful. I wouldn't have wasted <laughs> three, four years being, you know, hesitant about starting the conversation. One thing that would really help if you are new, if you're coming to Tacoma, whether you are immigrant or non-immigrant, doesn't matter. I think just read the history of Tacoma. It's a fascinating story. This city is something. Uh, the ups and downs that city has gone and the role that community has played, you don't find that in many, very many places. Uh, most cities, when they go down to that level, they never rise back unless there is, you know, some influx uh, that outside of the community, like government coming in and putting too much money or some company comes in and they invest a lot of money. But Tacoma is one of those cities where normal people did normal, simple things to raise their city back to the levels which they want to see it. You know, so they build the city from the ground up. And the story of Tacoma is very important because uh, it will inspire new people to come and, and they would also see their role, how much they can do and how much other people like them have done. And it would make them very comfortable. They will know there's a role to play and uh, people like them have played that role before. But other than that, you know, if you're planning to come to Tacoma, just come to Tacoma and let yourself be absorbed by the the artistic and entrepreneurial and the natural beauty, there's a lot here. <laughs>